Welcome, this is Dr. Sam Fiala. Uh, this is a, a brief uh, video about how to write a research proposal. Uh, I'll also be posting uh, several other videos about each major section of a research proposal. Uh, so this particular video is just an overview, about 20 minutes in length, that gives you an idea of what uh, the components are of a research proposal. Uh, so, starting with some basics, uh, why write a research proposal? Uh, a couple of reasons. Uh, the most common is uh, that uh, frequently when you want to do research, you have to get approval from other people, uh, especially in an educational setting. If you're writing a, a thesis or dissertation, uh, as uh, uh, some of the students in our experimental psych, psych uh, program, uh, if they're going to do a thesis, they have to propose it to a committee first and get approval. Uh, so they have to write a proposal paper uh, before they can collect any data. Uh, additionally, whenever you're conducting research, you have to get approval um, usually from some committee uh, other than your thesis or dissertation committee uh, that uh, gives you the stamp of, stamp of approval saying that uh, you're conducting your, uh, your research ethically, right? So that's the IRB or Internal Review Board. Um, and they don't often want to see a full uh, paper, <laughs> but uh, if you write a proposal paper, uh, you can often pull from that. Some sections of it are things that they'll want in their IRB applications. Um, so approval from, from others. Uh, getting funding, right? If you want to get uh, some money to help you with the research, uh, the best way to do that often is to apply for a grant. Uh, and when you apply for a grant, you need to be able to tell the, the people with the money bags exactly what you plan to do and how you would do it. Uh, and um, uh, grant writing is a uh, has a few more steps beyond proposal writing. Cause proposal writing is here's how I would do it. When you write for a grant, you have to go a little bit beyond that because you have to talk about uh, things like here's how long uh, the whole process would take, not just what participants do, but the whole thing. Uh, here's the cost. Here's what each thing would each uh, everywhere the money would go. Here's where it, where it would go. Those types of things aren't typically included in a research proposal, but for a grant proposal, uh, they obviously uh, would be. And then different grant uh, granting companies have other requirements too, in terms of uh, justifying that you're meeting a particular need in a community, uh, perhaps. Uh, another reason is if um, you're wanting to um, uh, refine your ideas or maybe your methods. So. Uh, academics who are no longer, you know, they've already written their theses and dissertations and they're just uh, doing research now because they enjoy it or you know, they want to keep their jobs. Um, sometimes they might may write a proposal paper to run by uh, their colleagues or if they have a research team, other people on their research team to get some feedback and improve upon their project uh, before collecting data. Uh, because collecting data is a lot of work and you, you really want to have the best possible plan before you do all that work. Uh, and so if there are things that can be approved, uh, improved upon, it's good to get that feedback uh, before you go to all the trouble of collecting data um, because you'd hate to make a mistake and get to the end and realize that all of your, your data are meaningless because you made some sort of methodological error. Right. Um, okay, Who's the audience for a proposal? Well, again, it kind of depends upon uh, the purpose, but usually some group of people or, or a committee but that just depends on uh, why you're you're writing it. Uh, maybe even you're you're just writing it for yourself. Okay. Uh, a common question is, well, how does this differ from a research uh, paper or a, a research article? Well, a couple of ways. You know, a research paper for a class, typically you're um, you're uh, gathering information. Right? And maybe you're making some argument in the paper about uh, the way things should be or the way things are. But you're, in most research papers, you're not typically talking about how you would conduct a study. Right? In a research proposal, you are talking about a proposed methodology for conducting a study of some type. Uh, and then this differs from a research article uh, in two major ways. One, verb tense. Because it's a proposal, you're talking uh, largely in future tense and present tense, especially in the methods section. Uh, you know, participants will be asked to yada yada. Um, this many participants will be recruited. Whereas once you've conducted the research and you're writing up uh, uh, 
a manuscript for submission for, for publication, you're talking about what you did. Participants were asked, participants were recruited, so that's kind of a, a simple semantic difference, but an important one. Uh, and the other big difference, you don't have any analyzed data in a proposal, right? You haven't done it yet, so you can't have any any uh, data. You have information, right, from reading other research, but you don't have any numbers from any participants because you don't have any participants yet. Right? So, uh, in a, a a manuscript submitted for for publication in a research article, there's typically a results section. In a proposal, we'll see it's a little different. You have a data analysis section where you talk about what you propose to do. And also, as we'll see, the discussion section is a little different in a proposal because, again, you have no data to discuss. Uh, on to the, the components. The introduction, and this is one of the uh, you know, large components. Uh, in the introduction section uh, often looks a lot like a research paper for a class. This is where you're you're gathering lots of information from a variety of sources and making some argument. But in this case, the argument is centered around some research question you have. So, in your introduction, you've got to introduce your research question, what it is that you're trying to uh, figure out. Uh, so you're going to talk about what your question is in your introduction, and you're also going to have to establish its importance and relevance. You know, well, why should we care about uh, whether or not this particular treatment uh, is more effective for PTSD than some other treatment? Right? Uh, and so making this argument, sometimes you'll say, well, there's this problem in the world that needs solving, and you can cite a bunch of data saying, well, here are all these people uh, who uh, have been diagnosed with PTSD, and many of them are uh, you know, committing suicide or getting involved with uh, drugs or in the criminal justice system. Um, and so, therefore, because of all these social problems related to this diagnostic uh, entity, we need to find out the best way to treat it. Right? So, justifying the importance of your question. Right? Uh, and so sometimes it's very applied like that. There's some real world problem. There's all these bad things happening. We've got to figure this out. It may just be that there's some unexamined question. Right? If you're doing more of a more basic science than applied science, it may just be no one has yet considered whether or not this thing is possible, or whether or not there is a significant difference between this thing and this thing, right? Uh, you know, are there um, uh, major depressive disorder? Do, is everyone who has major depressive disorder, do they really have the same disorder, or are there different disorders that have gotten lumped together and are called the same thing? Right? It's kind of a more of a basic question. Maybe there is some, some difference there. Uh, or maybe there, there are disagreements about the answer to a question, right? So the question is, um, should parents uh, uh, spank their children? And people disagree, but I would need to find uh, some empirical evidence to help answer this ongoing debate. Right? But anyway, somehow you've got to establish your question is important and relevant. Because right? we don't want to be wasting scientific resources on questions that are unimportant and irrelevant. Uh, another big chunk of the introduction will be summarizing uh, the current knowledge related to your research question. And so, what do we know already about this topic? And it's not every single thing, but it's the most recent and most relevant things we know about that topic, especially if anybody else has attempted to answer your uh, particular question before. You want to talk about what they did and what they came up with. And if people have attempted to answer your question before. You need to be sure and establish that, yeah, they've tried, but there was something wrong with how they did it, or their answer was incomplete. Because right? if somebody's already answered it perfectly, why are you doing it again? Unless, of course, you're doing a replication study where you're saying, well, they, somebody did it before, but it was 20 years ago, and now we need to see if this phenomenon still is true for more recent generations. Okay. But again, you have to uh, if a study has been done before, you have to talk about why you're doing it now, which kind of goes back to that importance. But anyway, you want to talk about current knowledge related to your question, which sets the context for your study. So where does your question and your hypothesis fit into what we already know? Because right? science is all about building on existing knowledge. It's not about doing little studies here, there, and everywhere that are scattershot. It's about moving forward collectively with some knowledge. Right? So here's what we know. Here's the next step. Here's my study. Um, 
you also want to uh, clearly identify your hypothesis in the introduction section. Okay. So this is what you think the answer is to the research question. Okay. Uh, and typically it's where, well, if this theory is true, if what I think is true, then we will see this with the data. Right. And the, the thing that I think is most often ignored when writing research proposals, but is probably the most important component, the most important thing to do in the intro, establish your rationale for your hypothesis. Why do you think that's true? Why do you think this treatment will be better than that treatment? Right? That needs to be uh, well articulated and well grounded. When I say well grounded, I mean it has to be uh, have a clear connection to either uh, or either a theory. Right? Here's this theory. This theory is well supported. And based on this theory, this should be true. Or and or or grounded in other research, and again, so maybe uh, somebody has found that a particular treatment works with uh, um, adults, right? but no one has yet studied it with children. Well, if you can say, okay, well, there's evidence that the treatment works with adults. Uh, adults and children differ in a couple of important things, like uh, verbal ability, um, crystal intelligence. However, this treatment seems to be, its effects in adults are independent of verbal ability and crystal intelligence. Therefore, it should work well in children, right? So you use previous research theory and logic to justify your hypothesis. And this should be really well developed, uh, clearly articulated, so that uh, um, people know why you're, you're um, proposing an answer. It's not just, well, you know, it might be this. Let's see. You're wasting people's time unless you have a good rationale for why you're doing what you're doing and what you expect to happen. Okay, so the introduction section uh, is the first big section, and then the method section uh, is another huge section, and here's where you're doing the proposing of what you would do, right? The intro is all setting up context and why you're doing it, what you expect. The method is, okay, here's how I do it. Uh, it has several subsections, uh, the first of which is uh, the design subsection, which um, you'll see in many uh, research articles, not all, but uh, I require it in the proposal. And this is where you talk about um, the type of design you're doing, if it's experimental study, non-experimental study, quantitative, qualitative, if it's experimental, is it between subjects, within subjects, mixed subjects? Uh, you also, typically in the desi design section, identify what your primary variables are. Uh, if you have criterion and predictor variables or independent, dependent variables. And so we'll be looking at the effect of this on this. This will be defined as yada yada, and this will be defined as yada yada. So it's a real brief section. And then the sample subsection talks about your, your participants, people who, uh, what type of people would be in your study, not who were, because again, this is a proposal. So how many people would you recruit? Would you recruit equal numbers of men and women, equal numbers from certain ethnic groups? Do you want a certain level of diversity in terms of uh, ethnicity or age or gender in your sample? So all those characteristics of who you want to recruit, how you would recruit them, Right, so uh, the flyers we posted, the emails will be sent to this particular listserv, whatever it is, um, all those types of things. Uh, and then the materials section, which sometimes is called the uh, measures or measurement section, if all your materials are measurements, or sometimes called the materials and measurement section. Uh, but this is the stuff you would use to conduct the study. Um, uh, so if you have a survey or if you're giving um, questionnaires, you would describe them here. If you have experimental uh, apparatus, apparati, that you're going to be using, you know, people are going to be exposed to these videos and then asked to rate them, you would describe the videos here in the materials subsection. Uh, then the procedure is the kind of the, the bulk of the method usually. Here's where you're talking about exactly what's going to happen to the participants. So the procedure isn't what you're going to do when you write the paper. Like, first, I'll look for some articles. <laughs> it's not that. It's, okay, participants um, will be told to enter uh, 
the, the lab and wait and wait uh, quietly for the experiment to come in. Then a confederate will approach, and you know whatever is going to happen, uh, you know participants will complete uh, um, these four measures. They will have 30 minutes uh, to complete all measures. Whatever, whatever it is they're doing, use outlining it, and you want to give enough detail that somebody can come back and reproduce or replicate your study. Uh, okay, the data analysis section again, which is in proposals, different from a, a, a manuscript for publication or a, a journal article. Instead of having, because you don't, you don't have data, and please don't, don't make up data. Don't write as if you have data. And I say this every year, and every year somebody does it to me. Please don't, don't do that. Anyhow, uh, here's what you do include in your data analysis section is what scores or data will be used, will be analyzed, right? So if you're looking at depression, you talk about um, uh, participant scores on the Beck Depression Inventory 2 will be uh, analyzed. Right? So you're not saying, we'll look at how depressed people are. You say, clearly, I'm going to look at scores on the BDI 2, right? Or if I'm going to look at certain subscales of some measure, you say that. You say what test you would use for analysis. Uh, the two groups would be compared using an independent group's t-test. Right? The two groups would be compared using um, a 2 by 2 ANOVA. Whatever you're going to use, you say that. And then the, the last part is what your expected pattern of results is. And this isn't, I expect f to be equal 4.13. No, it's, I expect there to be a significant difference between two groups, or I expect um, scores on this measure to be positively correlated with scores on this measure, or negatively correlated with scores on this measure. Whatever that pattern of results is, you say that here. Again, and this is at the at the measurement level. So we're talking about depression. We're not talking about. Uh, I expect people in the therapy group to be less depressed. You don't say that here. You say, I expect participants in the therapy group to have lower scores on the BDI2. Right? So we're talking at the measurement level, which is different than a discussion where we then talk at the construct level. So in the discussion, you restate your expected outcome, your hypothesis, you know, in this study, uh, it, it uh, is expected that uh, people in the treatment group will be less depressed. And again, here, you don't say that they'll be have lower scores in the BDI-2. You say less depressed. So you speak at the construct level. Uh, so you, you state that, and uh, probably a good idea to connect it to, again, briefly, why you think that. Um, so previous research and theory, I want to mention that again. So some of the discussion mirrors the intro. Uh, then you want to address um, what things might limit the conclusions that can be drawn from your study. So kind of what are the potential problems with the study? You haven't done the study yet, but what could be limitations? And to think about these, you want to think about two things. You want to think about, well, if my hypothesis is supported, what might critics come at me and say, oh, yeah, well, you say this, you say there was an effect, but blah, 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 right? And that'll help you think of limitations. The other thing is, think of the other side of that coin. What if I didn't find it? What if I found that I found no difference between my therapy group and my no therapy group? What then might critics say, oh, yeah, well, you said, you said it didn't work, but, right? So think of, anticipate those criticisms for either uh, outcome, and that'll help you think of your limitations. And then the last part uh, is simply your potential implications of the results. So, you know, if you allow me to do this study, uh, uh, we'll be able to answer this question. And if we answer this question, then what? We're going to find these answers, which will mean that you know, if we find this treatment works better than this treatment, then people uh, should be told to, you know, do this therapy, right? Um, so you're talking about kind of a very applied things. You know, if we find that... Um, Couples who um, chat with each other on Facebook are happier than couples that uh, don't chat with each other on Facebook. Then we should recommend in couples therapy that people who are engaged in social media interact with their spouses online. Right? So we say that you know, if we find this, then people should do these things differently in their lives. It's the applied implications. The other thing would be the theoretical implications, because hopefully you found some theory that's relevant to what you're doing. And so you're going to say, well, if I find what I think I'm going to find, this is in line with this theory. And then the next step right, in testing this theory, extending the theory, is this. So you talk about future research. Okay. 
uh, and I know that ran on a bit long, but that's uh, an overview of how to write uh, research.